السلام Anyone knows why this isn't working? I've never, yeah, but I've never used it actually. So it's probably installing still, maybe. Remind me to give you the notes today, okay? To this class. Which one? I can't hear you. Okay, mashallah. I know it's the weekend, everybody's tired, but bear with me here. Okay. So, so what are we talking about in this class, this semester? Surah Rahman. And uh, I hope you guys remember some things from last topic. So you can remind me some details of what we talked about last class. Remember the central theme of the surah? Who remembers? Being thankful, right? Remember? 
gratitude, being thankful, being able to appreciate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings, remember? And who was the primary audience of the surah? It was the disbelievers of Mecca. Remember that? And this was revealed, we said, in the third or fourth year of the prophethood, which was the time where the disbelievers were denying the Prophet's message. You know, they, were, they didn't want to accept the message. Do you guys remember that? Yes? Okay. So it, this was primarily the audience that uh, the, uh, Allah is talking to. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeats how many times that question? Remember? 31 times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeats the question, which of the favors of Allah do you deny? Which of the favors of Allah do you deny? Which of the favors of Allah do you deny? Over and over and over again, subhanAllah. And what does that mean when, remember I told you, when a teacher repeats a question over and over and over again, what does that mean? That the audience is very stubborn. Remember that? When the audience is stubborn, you need to repeat, repeat, repeat over again. But the name of the surah is Rahman. So does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ever get upset and say, you know what? You guys are useless. We're going to stop this. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do? He keeps reminding over and over and over and over again. There's never an end to it, right? And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His name of Ar-Rahman applies perfectly to the surah. Because of the situation of the disbelievers and how stubborn they were. Uh, we talked about things like, remember the layout? Okay. We're, we're, we're doing it now. So, uh, Rahman, remember the five different categories of the surah, right? Five, the layout of the surah is five different points. Do you remember that? Yes? Number one is what? That's the first section of the surah. That's what we talked about last class. Remember that? The first three ayat of Surah Ar-Rahman. Ar-Rahman allama al-Qur'an khalaq al-insan allamahu al-bayan. And that's where we ended last class. What was the main topic of that section? Come on, say it, say it, say it. The first section was about what? The greatness of the Quran. Okay? And remember, we summarize it by saying that since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us, and He gave us the ability to speak and to express ourselves, which is Allamahu al-Bayan, what is the best way to live our lives and to express ourselves? Remember the last thing we ended the class with? What is the most important thing that we're supposed to use our tongues and our, our ability to speak with? You guys? Quran. Reading Quran, absolutely. Okay. To, te- to learn and teach the Quran. Remember that? Remember this? It was... This last thing that we talked about. The best use of a human being's life and speech is to learn and teach the Quran. There's nothing more superior to this that you can do in your life, okay? Because this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's words, okay? And let's just go back to the structure, okay? Because I want you to understand this structure and memorize it. The second part of the surah is about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's favors, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's favors. And then third, talks about the criminals, addresses mainly to the criminals. And you know today, if we reach there, these, this section is quite scary, actually. There's going to be a lot of, uh, you know, bad imagery there and <coughs> scenes from hellfire. And we'll, we'll talk about that, inshallah, when we get there. Then Allah talks about the believers. And then it, it ends with, the surah ends with the VIPs of Jannah. Right? Who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls in different, like in waqa'a, He calls them as sabiqun those who are the foremost, who always... In lead. You know like in class there's always the A students who always ace the class. They always want the A, A, A. And if they get like a 90, they get upset. You have, you have friends like that at school? Yeah. So that's what we're talking about here. Right? Is it, Ajinda, are you one of those? No? <laughs> okay. <laughs> then you downgraded a bit to the normal ones? Okay. So another example is economy class, business class, and first class. Right? Um... You know, first class is usually for the VIPs, business is for, you know, somewhat okay, and then economy is just the basics. And the similar in Jannah, there's levels, and there's people who are going to be competing for higher levels of Jannah. And hopefully all of us are competing for which level, inshallah? The highest, which is known as what? 
Jannatul Firdaus, right? Paradise Firdaus, that's what is known. And you know, we said there's an interesting synergy between Ar Rahman and Waqa'a, in that the order of these topics is the same, but mirror image, right? Mirror image. Is that a coincidence? Is it a coincidence? No, there's no coincidence in the Quran, right? This is, subhanAllah, one of the signs of the miraculous uh, uh, linguistic miracles of the Quran, subhanAllah, ta'ala, and how different topics are arranged in, in the Quran. So, what are we talking about today? We finished greatness of the Quran, what are we talking about today? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's <coughs> favors. Are you ready? Right. So if you remember, this is the layout, okay? This is the whole surah, inshallah. By next class, we should be finishing, inshallah, right? Because I don't want to go into too much detail. I'm going to try to cover other surahs, inshallah, as we go along. Basically, the layout of the full surah, we finished the first two lines here. Now we're going to be talking about Allah's favors in this class, inshallah, right? And since the next teacher is not going to be in class, I'll be lucky enough to go, inshallah, with you to the third section, which is criminals, inshallah, okay? But we'll try to break at Allah's favors. So, Allah's favors. By the way, can we count Allah's favors ever? No. So many, right? So, uh, Allah's, a'udhu billahi min shaitan rajeem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ash-shamsu wal-qamaru bi husban. This is like the first sign that Allah is telling us these are blessings. Ash-shamsu wal-qamaru bi husban. Ash-shamsu wal-qamaru basically means the sun and the moon. Bi husban means that they are running in perfect orbit. Perfectly calculated orbit. And you guys have studied this in uh, which class? Fourth grade, right? How the sun and the moon and the stars and all these planets. Uh, are, how many planets are there? Just in our universe, right? And then there's like other galaxies. And stuff. So there's basically there's a lot of stars out there in the sky, aren't there? Now who makes sure that these stars don't bump into each other and crash into each other? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's what he's talking about. How everything is perfectly in order, right? And by the way, why is Allah ta- telling us about this? Why is he saying, look at how the, the sun and the moon is in perfect synergy? And by the way, the sun, we use the sun to tell the day, time of the day, don't we? The timing of salah is based on what? The sun, right? Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha. What about the moon? What do we use the moon for? The calendar, right? When the month starts, when it's Eid, when it's Ramadan, right? All these things. So subhanAllah, as if Allah is linking time and discipline into this ayah. And it's as if Allah subhanAllah is telling us, listen, I've made the sun and the moon, these huge creations of Allah subhanAllah ta'ala. Allah subhanAllah is saying, these are in perfect discipline, perfect order. Now, what about us? How is your life? Are you disciplined? Is your life in order? Or is it all messed up? <laughs> right? We're so messed up, right? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us these ayat, these signs for us to ponder upon, for us to think about. That if Allah made everything around us so perfectly in order, we should be actually doing the same. So a question for all of us, did we wake up for Fajr today on time? Okay, you don't need to answer, because it's usually an embarrassing question for some, right? But just ask yourself, did we wake up, to, did we wake up on time? Are we sleeping late? Are we sleeping at 2 a.m.? Whereas, you know, we're supposed to be sleeping when it's dark. You know, it's a natural system. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the sun come up, so it's time to wake up. Some people, you know, on weekends, they sleep till 12 noon, right? And then they wake up and they stay all night, watch movies, listen to music. It's 2, 3 a.m. And just 15 minutes before Fajr, they go to sleep, right? That happens, unfortunately. So these are all signs for us. Another meaning of husban is that it's going to come to destruction. That's another meaning of the word husban, which means what? It's as if Allah is telling us, listen, time is running out. This sun, this moon is going to be destroyed when the day of judgment comes. Are you ready for it? Are you prepared for it? You know how like the, the, the bomb, usually you take a pin out of the bomb and then you throw it, right? And then it explodes after like, what, 10 seconds, 20 seconds? So it's as if Allah is telling us, listen, that sun and the moon, it's already about to explode. The pin has come out. 
How, how prepared are you? How ready are you? And then Allah says, When Najmu was Shajaru Yasjudan. And the star and the trees, they also prostrate, they also do sajda. Again, a question for us. The stars do sajda. Some scholars say the shooting star, you know the shooting star? When it shoots, what's happening? Look at it. It's as if it's doing sajda, subhanAllah, right? Also the trees, the branches of the trees, they fall down into sajda. And subhanAllah, I was looking up some images, came across this amazing tree. It's actually doing ruku'ah, you know? And subhanAllah, so why is Allah telling us this? Again, let's link it to our lives. Because the Quran is about changing our lives, right? So he said the sun and the moon are signs for us to be disciplined. What's Allah telling us here? The stars and the trees are doing sajda. What about us? Are we praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Are we submitting our lives to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because that's what sajda is all about, right? Sajda is a sign of complete submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Isn't it? You see how the Quran like penetrates our hearts when we think about the words of Allah and it's as if Allah is talking directly to us. And as I'm, as I'm going through these ayat, don't think that Brother Fahd is talking. Just try to imagine that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to you. Every single one of you individually. Allah is telling you, the stars and the trees have submitted to me. What about you? When are you going to submit to me? Okay, when are you, give your, when are you going to give your life to me? Right? And then Allah says, next ayah, ayah number seven. وَالسَّمَاءَ رَفَعَهَا وَوَضَعَ الْمِيزَانِ Wow, amazing ayah, right? So Allah's talking about the skies and how He raised the skies and He made a perfect balance. Okay? Similarly, look at all the stars. We live in, what's, what's our galaxy called, by the way? The Milky Way galaxy. And there's like so many other galaxies, right? Allah's saying, Allah raised these stars and these skies up. And He put a balance for us. Perfect balance. This whole universe is in perfect balance and perfect harmony. And by the way, what's, gonna, what's one of the signs of the Day of Judgment that has to do with the sun? Anyone knows? Yes. So when the sun loses balance and rises from the west, that's where this life is over. Up until then, this life is going to be in perfect order, it's going to be in perfect discipline. So it's as if Allah is telling us, listen, He's warning us, Allah tatgaw fil mizan. Don't you mess up your balance in life. Right? Don't you mess up your balance in life. And this links completely to our um, previous semester's talk, which was about balancing roles in life. Remember that? You all remember that? Balancing roles in life. So what are some examples of people who have imbalanced roles in their lives? Remember this chart? We have different roles that we play, right? You're, you're a brother, you're a sister, you're a, you're, we will be mothers one day. You're students, you are slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are community members. You gotta take care of your health, you gotta take care of your intellect. You have to take care of your spirituality. You have to... And can you, by the way, do any sorts of injustice in any of these roles? No, right? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to hold us accountable for us. So it's as if Allah is telling us, listen, I've made all the universe so balanced, you need to balance your lives. Allah tatqaw fil mizan. Don't you cross the limits of this balance. And don't you just mess around that balance. Don't mess up that balance. Wala tukhsirul mizan. Don't do injustice, basically. Remember this slide? Of how we have different roles in life. And some roles, we do justice. In some roles, we're doing excellence. Usually, you know, when it comes to being friends, we're doing excellence. When it comes to entertainment, we're always excelling in that field, right? For, for men, usually when it comes to money and career, there's excelling there. Maybe at school, everyone's excelling at school. But Allah's telling us, look at the other areas of your life. How's your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How's your relationship with the Quran? When was the last time you sat and read the Quran and thought about what Allah's talking about? When was the last time you opened a book of the Prophet Sirah, his biography, and started learning about his Sirah? When was the last time you had quality time with your parents? 
right? That's usually rare, right? Yesterday, mashallah, very good. So quality time with parents, that's also part of your roles. Quality time with your brothers and sisters, quality time with your neighbors, quality time with your friends. We need to have balanced lives. And if we, we fail or if we're doing dhulm or oppression in any one of these roles, what will the end be? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask every single one of us. And you know, this reminds me of a very beautiful hadith of the Prophet where he asked the Sahaba, do you know who the bankrupt is? And the Sahaba says, uh, no, Ya Rasulullah. You know, I mean, uh, well, all we know about bankrupt is someone who has a business and the business fails and he has no money left. So he said, no, this is not the bankrupt I'm talking about. The real bankrupt, and listen to this carefully, the real bankrupt is the person who has tons of good deeds. He has salah, he has fasting, he has you know, a lot of uh, du'as, and maybe he's helped with charity, and he's gone to Umrah and Hajj. He has a lot of good deeds, mountains of good deeds. And on the day of judgment, he thinks he's going to Jannah. But then, these red lines come up. He cheated in his school. He didn't talk to his parents nicely. He you know, was a bad employee at work. He was a bad neighbor. And then all these people will come and ask for the rights from that person. And so that huge mountain of good deeds will slowly start decreasing, 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 decreasing until what's going to happen? Nothing left and he still needs to pay people back. And that's where he will be completely bankrupt. So that mountain of good deeds will, will turn into dust. Nothing will be remain and he will enter the hellfire. That's the real bankrupt. So Allah is telling us, you know, balance your lives. Look at the stars, look at the moon. And by the way, is the world in a mess today? Yes or no? Like there's wars, there's oppression, there's injustice, there's poverty, people dying, right? People don't have clothes to wear. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, listen, just look up at the skies. See how everything is in perfect harmony. Look at the trees, look at the, look at the birds flying. Do you see any wars happening up in the sky? But the moment you look down, what do you see? You see bloodshed and fires and earthquakes and fighting and injustice and people being jailed innocently and, and crime and diseases, right? It's as if Allah subhanahu wa is telling us, listen, just look up. This is how the world should be. This is how you should try to make this world peaceful, full of harmony, full of love, right? So it's as if Allah has given us the ideal model right, right up above us. All you have to do is look up. And who's going to, by the way, if you see the world in such a mess, now the question is who's going to fix this? Hmm? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Every single one of you, every single one of us, including myself, we have to do our part, right? We can't just sit and eat uh, pakores and chai and say, you know what, the world is a bad place and, you know, it's so bad. The ummah is in such a tough time, you know, and it's, we're going through tough, tough times. You can't just sit and complain. You've got to do something about it. That's the purpose of our lives. Every single one of you should have a purpose. Choose one of these problems and do something about it. Get it in order. Get it in balance. And then Allah says, وَالْأَرْضَ وَضَعَهَا لِلْأَنَامِ And He made the earth a place of, you know, uh, for inhabitants. Anam is all sorts of creatures. It's as if Allah is saying, there is a home for every single creature on this earth. This earth has been made with homes for every single creature. And so even the ants, they have their homes. Human beings have their homes. All sorts of animals. The fish have their homes under the sea. Subhanallah, right? These are things to be thankful about. And you know, today, how do we apply this to us? People complain, you know what, my house is small, my friend has a bigger house. I wish we had a house with a swimming pool. You know? I wish we had a nice big park in our house, nice garden. We complain. Don't we? Allah is telling us, be thankful you have a house. Be thankful you have a roof on your head. There's people who don't have, who've been living in tents for the past 5-10 years as refugees, right? 
So these are all messages for us to be thankful, be thankful, be thankful. And who's Allah talking to primarily again? The, the audience, right? Which was the disbelievers. Now it's, they're starting to think about this. You're right. I have a house. I have, I'm living so comfortably. I should be thankful. Who should, I, who should I be thankful to? Of course, right? You have to be thankful to somebody. And Allah is saying, you know, stop denying these favors. And then he says, this earth, there is housing for everybody in this earth. At the same time, there is fruits and date palms with special gift wrapping. Now, I love this ayah, right? فِيهَا فَاكِهَةٌ وَالنَّخْلُ ذَاتُ الْأَكْمَامِ Okay? So fruits, we all know, right? There's tons of fruits on this earth, and, you know, we get to enjoy all these fruits. Uh, my favorite fruit is mango. Anyone here likes mango? Yeah, I love mango, you know? Wow, all of us. <laughs> SubhanAllah. Uh, strawberries also are nice. Usually the expensive fruit is the best tasting fruit, right? And, and so, you know, we love fruits. It's one of the fruits of Jannah. But at the same time, when we give a gift to somebody, let's say I um, get an iPhone 5S for every single one of you, right? And the sisters, I give them that same phone with nice gift wrapping and a bag and a greeting card. And the brothers, I just give you the phone, you know, without the cover even, without nothing, That's just the phone. Fine. How will you feel? Will you feel a bit awkward, right? How come Brother Fahad gave them a gift with all this wrapping and everything? It makes you feel more special, doesn't it? When you give a gift to someone who's special, what do you do? You gift wrap it. Don't you do that? Why? I mean... What's the purpose? They're just going to open the gift and throw that wrapper away, aren't they? Go ahead and do that. Does anyone ever save up the wrapper? You do? My mom does it. <laughs> right. Some people like to save the wrapper because they're careful with you know, the scotch tape. It doesn't tear or anything. Um, but for the most part, the kids, they just you know, they, wrap, they tear the thing apart and they just open the toy. And we throw the box away and the toy stays. So Allah is telling us, these fruits that I gave you, they are also wrapped in an amazing gift wrapping. And it's not like the gift wrapping of dunya where, you know, that paper and everything is basically thrown away. Or it's usually something that is harmful to environments, right? You can't just take that paper and throw it out in the environment because it's bad for the environment, right? Especially plastic and boxes and cardboards. All these things are harmful to the environment. What, what about the gift wrapping of fruits? Can you, I mean, it's, it basically goes back into earth and it benefits the earth, doesn't it? SubhanAllah, so even the gift wrapping is environment friendly. And even smells nice, by the way. Next time you eat a mango, just smell the, the gift wrapping. And we like to lick it and, you know, make sure it's, nothing is remaining from it. So SubhanAllah, next time we eat fruits, brothers and sisters. Let's enjoy this amazing blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's try to think of it as a present from Allah. With a gift wrapping, you open it, you taste it, and smell, like smell the mango, smell the banana peel. Right? Appreciate this, these flavors. And appreciate these favors. Because these are all reminders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالْحَبُّ ذُو الْعَصْفِ rayhan." So hab is all sorts of grains, right? And when you're like dal, dal, lentil soup, Okay, so all sorts of grains. Allah is saying, Al-habbudu al-asfi, all sorts of grains and wheat and all these uh, seeds that are in the plantations. And all sorts of gardens with nice smell. Rayhan means nice smell, nice fragrance. Who has Allah made all of these for? For who? For us. For us. Imagine if all flowers were just black and white. Imagine if flowers didn't smell nice. Imagine if they stunk. Right? What's the best gift you can give someone who just gave birth to a baby girl or baby boy? Flowers. Why? Because they look nice and they smell nice. They make the room smell so nice. At least for three days. After three days, it starts getting stinky, right? But for the most part, you know, flowers are... Like, if I buy my wife, let's say... jacket she's gonna like it but if I get her a flower just one flower it costs maybe like one tenth of the price right 
One flower costs, one rose costs like 500 fills. Which one will she appreciate more? The flower, right? Not the jacket. Maybe in winter she'll appreciate the jacket more. <laughs> but she likes the flower. Why? Because there's a sense of like, there's a romantic feeling in it, you know? The smell and it's as if I'm telling her you're just like this rose, you know? She gets all these nice uh, messages. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, he's telling the disbelievers, the people who are unthankful, listen, I've given you all these things. When are you going to start thanking me? When are you going to start thanking me? This is the first time this thing comes up, right? This question. Which of the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are you going to be denying? Okay? And usually the way we, sh we should respond to that, every time this question comes up, is, Ya Allah, we do not complain about any of your favors. Thank you, Allah, for all your, uh, for all your favors. We do not deny them. Okay? As believers, we do not deny them. So when you're li listening to this surah being recited in salah, or if you're reciting with the surah in your memorization, stop whenever this question comes up and answer back to Allah. Have a conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, I'm not complaining. Thank you so much for everything. I have nothing to complain about. And let's stop being people of complaints. Right? Unfortunately, we live in times when we complain constantly, 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 right? Give me examples of stupid things that we co co complain about. Phone is dead, right? Wi Fi, is Wi-Fi, internet is slow. Studies, bad hair day, you know? Teacher sucks, right? AC not cold enough. Too hot, too hot, too cold. My clothes are getting uh, old. I need to buy new, new shoes. The latest game came out. Mom, Dad, can I buy the latest PSP game? PS4, yeah. So we are never satisfied. We are never satisfied. And you know why? Because we are brought up in a society where anything we want, we get. Anything we ask for, we get. My daughter asks me for Lego, I get her Lego. She asks me for a bag, I get her a bag. She asks me for ice cream, I give her ice cream. And then slowly, slowly, we start thinking that, you know what? We deserve all of these things. We deserve all of these things. And then one day she says, Baba, I want ice cream. I'm like, no, today we're not having ice cream. What's going to happen? She starts, yeah, tantrum, crying, and she's going to think I'm the worst father ever in the world, right? She's going to forget all the ice cream she's had, like, in the past. And, you know, kids nowadays, if you take them to the toy store, like Toys R Us or somewhere, right? She goes through all around the store, and then eventually, how many gifts am I going to buy her? How many toys am I going to buy my daughter usually? It's one, right? But, subhanAllah, every time I buy her a toy, she walks out of the store crying. Yes. Why? Because there's still a thousand and one toys that I didn't buy her. Right? Seriously, that's how kids are. It's really, yani, subhanAllah, it's very, very difficult to make them appreciative. So we need to start being appreciative. We need to stop complaining. Remember the example of the glass I always give? The glass is either half empty or half full. If you are someone who thinks the glass is half empty, then you are a negative person. Always think that, you know what, there's still half, half of the glass is still remaining, okay? Always be thankful and never look above. Don't ever compare yourself to someone who's higher than you. Someone who has a bigger house than you. Someone who, whose father has a nicer car than your father has. Because is there an end to this? It's, there's no end, right? There's no end if you look up. You're going to get tired. So what's the best thing to do to appreciate your life? Look, look below, right? If you look below, you're going to be feeling thankful. And that's one of the reasons I like to go back, you know, every now and then, I like to go back to Pakistan. You know, we, our family roots come from like a city called Sialkot, okay? It's like really, really old, old city and it's, everything is like very old and dirty and you know, and he, there's no roads, tight, tight roads. But I love to go there, why? Because when you go there, you start appreciating you, your house in Bahrain, your bed, your, bath, your clean bathroom, your nice food, your amazing fridge, the nice AC, 
Because there, like every three hours, the electricity goes away. Mm. So, you know, uh, we need to be people of, of thanks and not people of complaining. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانَ So we're here now, okay? Ayah number 12. خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ صَلْصَالٍ كَمْ فخار. Now he's telling us about our creation, the insan. He was created from صَلْصَالٍ كَالْفَخَّارِ and salsal is basically mud and, and water and dirt that's mixed up, just like we make pottery. You guys know pottery? Yeah? It gets pretty nasty and dirty, right? So what's Allah telling us? Stop being arrogant. You were created from this dirty thing, okay? this dust. You're nothing but mud. Don't forget. And salsal also, you know, you know when you have a pottery and you knock, it, knock on it? Makes a sound, right? That's also what some call is Allah's telling us, listen, you And Adam alayhi salam actually was created from mud before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blew his ruh into him. So it's putting us back into our place. And you know, uh, in, in uh, Indian movies, the, the biggest insult you can do is uh, like a poor guy is walking by and you drive fast with your car and he splashed some mud on his face, right? And he wipes the mud off his face. It's like such a big insult, right? Or you kick dust on someone. How do you feel? We feel offended, don't we? Allah is telling us, listen, you were created from this dust. There's no need to be arrogant about it. And That none of us will enter Jannah if we have an atom's weight of arrogance in our hearts. How big is an atom, brothers and sisters? You can't even see it. You can't even see it. So it's a, it's a pretty scary hadith, right? Stop being arrogant. And you know, modern uh, methods of being arrogant is at school. Hey, check out my new watch. You know? Check out my new iPhone. Which, which phone do you have? Oh, you still have the old Nokia phone? Ah. Okay. By the way, we went, this summer we went to London. Where did you go? Ah, you stayed in Bahrain. Ah, okay, okay. Our house is a swimming pool. Where do you live? Ah, you live in an apartment. Ah, I'm sorry. Right? Modern forms of arrogance, right? We, we try to put other people down and make ourselves more superior. Okay, very, very, very dangerous. Beware, beware, be humble. Because we were created from something that was nothing. And then Allah says about the jinns, وَخَلَقَ الْجَانَّ مِنْ مَارَجِ مِنْ نَارِ By the way, I forgot to mention, you know that question, فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ it's, it's in dual form, right? تُكَذِّبَانِ who is, who is Allah talking to? Who are the two groups Allah is talking to? Humans and jinn. Humans and jinn. Okay? Human beings and jinn. And so Allah is addressing each one separately. He told us we were created from this mud, and then he's telling the, the jinn, وَخَلَقَ الْجَانَّ مِنْ مَارِجٍ مِنْ نَارِ Okay? And basically what that means, marriage, is basically this blue part here of the flame. You know how like sometimes even on the cooking stove, you get this blue, bluish color when you light up the flame? That's what marriage is. Okay? So that's basically where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the jinn from. فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ Again, he's addressing us and the jinn. Which of the favors Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are you denying? And then he says, you know, unfortunately, some of the, one of the forms of denial is this whatever mentality in the youth today. Right? Do people use that word a lot? Why do they use it and when do they use it? Can you tell me? All the time. For what? Yeah, ignore, just whatever, you know. 
whatever, yani nothing, nothing matters. Everything is boring, right? I don't care, whatever. We don't get impressed by anything. We see the bird flying, whatever. We see the sun setting, whatever. We see, you know, um, an amazing tree, whatever. It's just a tree. We see like uh, these amazing colors of the fish. Yeah, whatever. It's just fish. Right? So it's, uh, please, 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 all of us, let's make a commitment today to delete this word from our dictionaries. Let's not use this word, whatever. It's a very, very insulting word. Okay? Whatever, and I'm bored. You know? Please. رَبُّ الْمَشْرِقَيْنِ وَرَبُّ الْمَغْرِبَيْنِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, I am the master of the two Easts and of the two Wests. What is that talking about now? Two East, two Wests. In some places Allah says, رَبُّ الْمَشَارِقِ وَالْمَغَارِبِ Also, I am the Lord of the Easts and the Wests. And so what does it mean? So, you know, there's different interpretations, but one, the one I like the most is, how many Easts do we have, by the way? Right? Northeast and southeast. How many wests? So it's as if Allah is saying, I'm the master of this whole world. Right? Every single angle of the earth is covered. Rabbul Mashriqain, the two east and the two wests. I am their master. Right? And when Allah says Rabb, what does that make us? What does Rabb mean? Master, right? So if Allah is our master, what are we? His slaves, right? And a slave, uh, you know, are you, are you happy to be Allah's slave? We all have to be happy, right? Usually slaves hate their job because they're owned by some master who's always torturing them and who's always giving them these rules and, you know. But we love our master. We, in fact, we're actually thankful for our master. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Thank you, Allah, for being our, our master. So, رَبُّ الْمَشْرِقَيْنِ وَرَبُّ الْمَغْرِبَيْنِ فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ Again, the question comes, and what do we answer? I told you guys. Ya Allah, none of your favors are we denying. Thank you for everything you're giving us. Keep, keep saying this in the back of your mind. And as, as we continue all these blessings, we're listing them down, these favors, be thankful. Say Alhamdulillah. Say Alhamdulillah with meaning. Even in your salat, when you're reading, and in Surah Al Fatiha, right? Say Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. And just pause for a second and just think. And then when you, when you uh, after Ruku' you get up, you say, Sami Allah, Liman Hamida, Rabbana, Walakal Hamd. And just stop and think. Thank you, Allah, for everything. Okay? This is, Allah has built this in our Salat five times a day. Why? Because he wants us to be people of thanks. And you know, uh, my teacher used to tell me, you know how like there's alphabets? I think I told this to you. How many letters in the alphabet? 26. 26. What's the first letter? So if the first letter in the alphabet is A, and there's 26 letters, the foundation or the first letter of our deen is alhamd. If we don't have hamd, the rest of the deen, you can say goodbye to it. That is the essence of our deen. That is the essence of being a believer. Okay? Being thankful. And the essence of being a disbeliever is being ungrateful, unthankful. Right? Remember I told you the opposite of shukr is kufr in Arabic? Okay? And then Allah says, Maraj al Bahraini al And this is one of the miracles of the, um, the Quran where Allah says, He made the two seas meet with each other maraj al bahraini two seas meeting together bainahuma barzakhun la yabghiyan in between them there is a separation separating line and neither of them cross one another you guys know what this is talking about right so there's the sweet water and there's the salty water right this is actually a place on earth where this is actually happening In the Bahamas? I don't know. I mean, have you heard of the Dead Sea? Yeah, so that's like really salty water. I've, I've actually had the 
opportunity to actually swim in the Dead Sea. And by the way, you can't even swim in the Dead Sea. You basically sit on the Dead Sea. Literally, because your body doesn't even go down. Like, you can't sink in there. And people like read newspapers on the Dead Sea and stuff, right? So, um, yeah, so that's extremely salty. But then it's connected to some ocean, right? Isn't it? All oceans are connected. And so there is a separating line. Maraj al yaltaqiyan. He combined both oceans. Bainahuma barzakhun la yabghiyan. In between them, there is a separating line, and neither of them cross one another. You know, they're still maintaining their order. It's as if Allah is telling us, listen, even the oceans are my slaves. Logically, oceans should meet with each other and mix, right? Shouldn't they? If you take salty water and you put sweet water into a jug, what happens to the jug? It's full of, like, a mixture of sweet and salty, right? Logically. But Allah is saying, no, no, no. This is a sign that even the seas, I can make the seas my slaves when I want to. I can make that knife that cuts, I can make it not cut, Ismail alayhi salam. I can make the fire that is supposed to burn Ibrahim Islam, I can make it cool for him. I can make those slaves for me. So again, a reminder for us, are we, are we crossing the boundaries? Or are we maintaining the boundaries that Allah has put for us? SubhanAllah, you see how amazing this meaning is? Just like these two seats aren't, aren't crossing the, that limit, the limitations, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, are you crossing limits? Do you know your limits, first of all? And if you know them, are you crossing them? Right? Very deep meaning. يَخْرُجُ مِنْهُمَ الْلُؤْلُؤَ وَالْمَرْجَانِ Now, both of these seas, Allah is saying two things come out. الْلُؤْلُؤْ marjan. What does لُؤْلُؤْ mean? Pearls. Beautiful pearls, right? Favorite jewelry for sisters also. يَخْرُجُ مِنْهُمَ الْلُؤْلُؤْ وَالْمَرْجَانِ From these two seas, by the way, there's pearls that come out from sweet water and pearls that come out from salty water, both. يَخْرُجُ okay. مِنْهُمَ الْلُؤْلُؤُ وَالْمَرْجَانِ Marjan is this corals. You see all these beautiful corals? They're called, they're called coral. They're plantations under the water. Anyone here dives, by the way? Underwater diving? I highly recommend you to dive, by the way. Learn, get the license. The paddy license is called. I've done it. Just so that you can appreciate the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala underwater. It's just unbelievable, really. When you see the colors and the plantations. So this is what we call marjan. Again, beautiful. I mean, why did Allah have to make such beauty underwater which can't even be seen by most people? Have you ever thought about that? What's the purpose? I mean, he could have made it just I mean, brown. Right? But you could discover and appreciate. And discover and appreciate every single detail. فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ We're at this And then he says وَلَهُ جَوَارِ الْمُنْشَآتُ فِي الْبَحْرِ كَالْأَعْلَامِ And to him belong the big ships in the sea. الجوار المنشآت means the big ships in the sea. كالأعلام They're just like these huge flags and huge signs. You ever seen these big cruise ships? Yeah. So what's making them float on the water? And by the way, if you take a pearl and you drop it and see what happens to it, it goes down. So just before he was talking about pearls, who gives it the ability to sink? Who gives the pearl the ability to sink? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the ability to make huge ships float. Buoyancy, yeah, obviously, yeah. So we, um, anyone ever been on a cruise or something? Yeah? Huge ships, right? It's like a city, basically. A mini city, isn't it? Right? And like maybe 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 people on the ship. So who's making this ship float? SubhanAllah, right? فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ So which of the favors of Allah do you deny? كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَانٍ Okay. Everything on this earth is going to come to an end. Fan means the end, right? From fana. You know fana also in Urdu, they use fana, right? Yeah. Everything will come to an end. 
we will all be in our graves. All plants will, will, will be lifeless at one day. All these stars, all these galaxies will be, will be destroyed. Right? Everything on this earth will come to an end. Everything will be destroyed. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask the, the amazing question, Liman al-mulku al-yawm? To who does the kingdom belong to today? Where are all the kings? Where are all the kings and the presidents and all the people who thought they were like important people? Where are they? They're all in their graves. Okay? And th even the disbelievers, by the way, can they deny this? Can they deny death? They, th they say that death is the most certain thing in life. Everything else, there's some sort of uncertainty, right? Everything else you can argue with, you can you know, come, come up with your own uh, conclusions and your own theories. But death is something that nobody can deny. So Allah is saying, everything on this earth will come to an end. وَتَبَارَكَ اسْمُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ Okay, this is a beautiful ayah that ends this section with. So Allah is saying, after all this earth comes to an end, listen to this and we'll sum up and then we'll take a short break. Everything on this earth comes to an end, but what remains? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wedge, which is basically means face, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself remains. Dhul Jalali wal Ikram. Dhul Jalali wal Ikram. And by the way, this is Dhul Jalali wal Ikram is a sign of honor. Usually, when do we human beings get honored? Give me examples of situations when you get honored. When you win something, what else? In studies, for example, when do you get honored? Grades, right? You get good grades. Graduation, you get honored. And usually, what do you need to be honored? You need like a huge audience, right? Can you imagine being honored with nobody in the room? Can that ever happen? So how come Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying this, right? He's saying, after everything is destroyed, my, I will still remain with honor. I will still have honor. Nobody's there, but Allah still has honor. Why? Does Allah need people to praise Him? No. You know, because some, some teens and some youth, they have these doubts. They come and ask me, Brother Fahad, why does Allah want us to thank Him? I mean, uh, why, do we keep, why, do we keep, why do we have to keep saying, SubhanAllah, you know, Alhamdulillah. Isn't Allah grander than that? Why does He need us to thank Him? Ma'adullah, some people think that, you know, Allah... Um, enjoys it when we thank him yani, you know you know how like some people they enjoy being praised in this dunya like kings they enjoy being praised some people think Allah has this similar attitude where he just enjoys it when people thank him and that's why he come out astaghfirullah that's not true Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is worth, worthy of praise whether we praise him or not that's what he's saying in this ayah tabarak ismu rabbika dhul jalali wal ikram Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself is worthy of praise whether we praise him or not. Okay? It doesn't rely on us, it doesn't depend on us. Okay? That's where uh, I think we could take a short break. Why didn't the bell go off, by the way? There's no bell today, isn't it? Okay, I think we should just take a small break because I don't want to keep this dragging. We'll continue, inshallah, uh, in five minutes. How about that? Five minutes, ten minutes. Are people gone out, by the way, or no? Yeah, so if you want to grab something from the canteen, you can go, inshallah, and then I'll see you in... There will be no bell, okay? So let's agree to come back. What time? Ten minutes? Okay. I think they said that you're not allowed to hang around on the playground, okay? So just go get your stuff and come back in class and you can eat inshallah okay eat and drink whatever you want but don't just walk around just go to the canteen and come back because i think there's something else going on in this all right subhanakallah <laughs> alhamdulillah